Hello everybody, in this video I will show you how to debug your Java application using Visual Studio Code. So debugging allows you to check your Java application if you think that the obtained result is unexpected. So debugging is much better than using multiple system out println because debugging allows you to perfectly control your application. Here in this example, we will debug this class. So this is the class name and it has one single global variable. It has this main method and it has two other methods which are read values which allows us to read the user input and print max which allows us to print the maximum value provided by the user. So before starting debugging, it is necessary to add breakpoints. So the breakpoint allows your Java uh, application to run till the, the next breakpoint. That's why I will add one breakpoint here. So I have to click here on this sidebar. And also I will just add another breakpoint just here. Now let's run this application in debugging mode. So I have either to click on this button or to make a right click and here I have to click on debug Java. So let's click on this. Now the application will run till this breakpoint. So as you can see, it is selected, which means that this line is the next line to be executed. So these methods and these statements has been already executed. And this is the obtained output from these statements. Now we are at this statement, but this statement is not executed yet. Also, we have this menu. So this is the continue button, which allows us to run till the next breakpoint, which is in our case, this breakpoint. We have also this button, which is step over, which means that we will execute the current statement and we will go to the next one. So if the current statement is a method, it will be entirely executed. Also, we have this button, which is step into. We have this button, which is step out. We have this restart button, this stop button, and this button, which is hot code replace. So now let's click on step over to go to the next statement. So let's click on this. Now this is the next statement that will be executed. And the previous statement has been already executed. And this is its output. So in our case, if we want to execute read values and to go to print max, we have to click on a step over. But if we want to go inside read values and see what happens inside it, we have to click on step into. So let's go inside read values. So let's click on step into. Now we are inside uh, read values. So let's click on step over to go to the next statement. Let's click step over again. Now the application will print this text to the user to ask him to provide a first value. So let's click on step over to execute the current statement and to go to the next one. So this is the text. It has been shown for the user. And now we are uh, at this statement, but it is not executed yet. So let's click on step over to execute the current statement. Now, as you can see, these buttons are disabled because the application is waiting for the user input. So let's provide some values. Now let's click step over again. And I have now to provide another value. Now I can uh, keep using step over till the end of the execution of this method or also I can click on step out to finish the execution of this method and to go to the next method. So let's click on step out. Now I have of course to provide other values. So the execution of read values has finished. Now we are at the level of print max, but print max is not executed yet. So I can either click on step over to execute this method and to go to the next one, or I can click on step into to go inside print max. In my case, I have no problem with print max. That's why I will click on step over to go to the next to go to the next statement. So let's click on this button. 
so this is the output of print max and here the next statement is this one but it is not executed yet now before executing this uh, statement let's take a look on the different variables of this class so to take a look on the values of the available variables we have either to go to this area so we have args variable we have table variable which is our array so we can expand it to see the different values of this array we have also the pointer of our class so this is the object of type console app it is called my console and it has this variable so this is the first case how we can check the values of the different variables another possibility is to put the cursor on the variable and here we have the different values of the selected variable so if i go to my console i see that this is the pointer value and this is the variable name and this is the value of the variable name another way to check the values of the available variables is to go to debug console so let's go to debug console so debug console allows us to verify and to execute some uh, expressions so here i will execute some expressions so the first expression that i want to execute is to ask uh, to see the value of my console variable so my console is of type pointer so this is the pointer value and if i expand it i see that it contains the variable name with this value also i can evaluate the following expression my console dot name and this is the value of this variable name i can also uh, evaluate the following expression so i will call the method length to check the length of the variable name and the value is 19 character also I want to check the content of the variable table which is of course an array so to check the different values of this array I have to expand this node so these are the available method uh, the available values I can also check the value of the first uh, value of this uh, array so I have to provide the following expression table of zero let's hit enter so the first value of this array is six also let's uh, evaluate the following expression table of zero higher than ten the answer is false so let's check if it is less or equal to ten and now the answer is true i can also modify the value of this uh, first uh, I can modify the, the, the first value of this array so I will say table of 0 equal to 12 and now I will check the first value of this array which is table of 0 and I see that the value is 12 now let's go back to the terminal and as you can see the next statement that will be executed is to print the first value of this array so let's see if that the value that we provided into the debug console has been considered or not so i will click on step over and as you can see the value of table of zero is equal to 12. now let's uh, keep executing the application till the next breakpoint that's why i will click on continue so all of these statements has been executed and this is the output and we are stopped at this breakpoint so let's click continue again but this time we will execute the application till the end because i don't have any other breakpoint so the application finished the execution and as you can see this is how we can use debugging using visual studio code so in this video i show you how to use debugging with a console application and in the next video i will show you how to debug java frame so thank you for watching and please subscribe to the channel